<clears throat> are we on? Okay, yes, perfect. We are on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do you guys want me to chat over here like you guys and say assalamu alaikum? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. <coughs> so let's just give it about a, <coughs> a minute so others can join in, inshallah, and then we're going to start. <coughs> Alaikum salam. <coughs> All right, guys, let us begin, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters and fellow youth of Masjid Tawfiq, I want to thank you uh, for tuning in and coming on live on YouTube. Um, hopefully, everybody's doing well in this very difficult time and situation that we have. It's a very beautiful day outside. Um, if you haven't looked outside the window, or maybe quickly open the door if you're being very cautious. Then uh, it's very beautiful outside, and it's been a while. We had a very uh, beautiful day. Um, so, inshallah, hopefully, with the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His blessings and His will, uh, times do become good for us, and so that we can go back to our uh, normal lives. So, on today's topic, inshallah. Um, and today's topic, inshallah, it says on the flyer, and most of you probably already know, that it's the mercy of Allah. <clears throat> the mercy of Allah. So I want to ask you guys a question that you, I know not everybody can respond over here because this is uh, YouTube live. So um, you can't really respond other than chatting right here. Um, this is not like Zoom. <clears throat> so, but I want everybody to think for a moment. What's the first thing that comes on your mind when you hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful? What's the first thing that comes in your mind? So I'll give you guys a moment to think about it. Just a few seconds. Okay. <clears throat> think of a sentence or an, uh, <clears throat> an idea ideology of what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. <clears throat> I see one person mentions uh, mentioned forgiveness. That's great. That's, good. That's a good idea. And uh, as the Prophet sallallahu says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am to my slave in whatever he thinks. So if you think beautiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you think rational if you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, if you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dealing with you well in good circumstances and bad circumstances, and you're having patience in the bad and, and, and grateful in the good, and you're thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in line the way a believer should be, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am whatever my slave thinks of me. Subhanallah. <clears throat> we have leniency. We have indeed Allah forgives all sins. Uh, these are... These are great, gracious, these are all great. So with this being said and with this being mentioned, in what notion do we have about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being mercy? Now let me give you a question to think about. <clears throat> there are individuals and people that you will meet where people will say that who do you worship and who do you believe in and do you believe in God? And at that time, you're going to respond that, you know, and I follow Islam and we believe there's only one God, Allah, and so on and so on. 
So this person or this individual may come tell you, and you will definitely find a person who will come and ask you this. Um, so do you believe uh, there, there is evil that exists in the world? And you'll say, yeah, the evil does exist. We have disasters, we have afflictions, we have hunger, we have starvation. Uh, we have more afflictions than that. We have warfare. And then at that time, they will tell you that, do you believe your God to be merciful? And you will say, of course, of course, uh, our God, God is merciful. And that's what you think of God. That's what you think of Allah. The first thing, you know, Allah Ta'ala is great. Allah Ta'ala is merciful. So at that time, they will try to bring this objection into you, in your head. Okay, so you have evil that exists. And then you have a merciful God in Allah. So why don't your God and your Allah, the very divinity that you worship, why don't you ask that Allah to take away this evil? Or why doesn't Allah Ta'ala take away this evil? Why does evil you know, exist? And they will tell you, what's the point of mercy being there when, when evil exists? Because mercy is not doing anything to evil. So these are the doubts that will be placed in your, in your heads, in your hearts. And... And you start to question yourself, like, hey, this is probably true. And this is, is true. It looks true. I mean, there's warfare there. There's hunger there, starvation, afflictions, disaster, natural disasters, and this is that. And then, you know, you're, you're pretty much thinking to yourself that where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Well, if you're having these type of, types of doubt, then you're going to have to rewind yourself and go all the way back and figure it out step by step why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and why he allows evil to exist because that's also his creation. It's a very easy answer. Evil is there because we need to um, be tested through this very evil and disasters. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has full authority of everything and we are the slaves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full authority of everything around him. So now when you rewind yourself from the beginning stages, I want everybody to focus on a verse of the Quran that says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most kind. Now, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. <clears throat> Remember, what is the first revelation of the Quran? The first revelation of the Quran is, Iqra bismi rabbi ladhi khalaq. Allah Ta'ala says, Read in the name of your Lord. Read in the name of your Lord. What does that show? That shows that when you read, you bring upon the name of Allah first. And it also gives us an indication towards each and every task that you do in this very world. You take the name of Allah. Because reading is an action. So that would also refer to you working, that's an action. You taking a sip of water, that's also an action. You eating, that's also an action. Don't everybody love eating? I'm probably sure everybody's waiting for iftar today. Because that is the highlight of our day, iftar. Alhamdulillah. So anything that we do, particularly action, when it has to be with action, we should do it with the name of Allah. Because Iqra Bismi says that it is with the name of Allah. So the word Bismillah, the, these words, in the name of Allah. And whatever comes after it will be included in Allah. Because Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Ar-Rahim, the most kind and the most compassionate. These are the qualities of Allah. See how Allah Ta'ala attaches that? So whenever you're doing anything, you take the name of Allah. And when you take the name of Allah, what do you want for that action? What do you expect from that action? You expect that I want to do this very action properly, uh, properly, and I want to do this action in the best way. I want to make sure that this action gets done precisely. And if it's such that if it's perfect, even though nothing is perfect, I would want it to be perfect, or at least close to, to, to perfection. And when you're saying Bismillah, you're already including what? You don't want this work to go in disaster. You, you, don't, you don't want this uh, work to go in vain. So when you're, when you're taking the name of Allah, you're already wanting what? The, is it the positivity or is it the negativity? Of course you want the positivity. And the positivity, Allah Ta'ala shows us, 
You know how positive I am? Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. The most merciful and the most kind. So, this is something to actually think about. The very words of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim already explains the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you do each and every particular action. This is why I said that go back and rewind yourself and you will find reasons how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy encompasses everything. And this is what was said in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. The hadith of the Prophet says that my mercy, it prevails, is it, it encompasses, it overpowers every evil, every punishment. Right? When you think of evil, what do you think? Punishment, um, evil, craziness, and, and, and darkness. That's what you think. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that my mercy, it prevails everything. Then we have to rewind ourselves. We're still rewinding ourselves, right? What did we talk about so far? We talked about daily actions. Whatever we do, when we mention the name of Allah, we're automatically what? Already assuming the positivity outcome, the near perfection through our actions. That's the first thing. <clears throat> the second thing to rewind ourselves back. When you think about the word and you contemplate about the word Ar-Rahman in Ar-Rahim. Now, let me give you the meanings for these two words because... I don't want to keep going back and forth and, and saying it because I'll, I'll be using uh, 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 just the word mercy. And you might ask that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing two words if it kind of means the same thing. So think, think about it like this. You have a box. You have a box. And then you have another box inside. Okay. So the outside box is Ar-Rahman. And the, the box inside is Ar-Rahim to show the closeness in meaning. The difference between the two, even though there's not much of a big difference, but the slight difference between the two is that Ar-Rahman is special for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ar-Rahim has a definition which can be applied to the human beings. This is why a human being cannot be a Rahman. Yes, he can be Abdul Rahman. If you have to add the word Abd there, he can be Abdul Rahman, the slave of the Most Merciful. But a Rahim is a general use. You you use it generally for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you can use it for human beings. Now, during the time in the initial stages of Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes mention of this very of this very word to the people of Mecca. And he says, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. The people were really confused. They're like, hey, um, that's a very hyperbolic word. It, I mean, we never really heard of it. It's the, the eloquence in this word. It's just outstanding. It's so powerful. And it's like, you know, unlimited mercy. So you and I can have mercy in this world. You and I can be generous in, 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 this, in this world. The person, uh, someone's asking, uh, what uh, who was he referring to? That's what they were confused about, what they were confused about. No, I'm talking about the word Ar-Rahman. The word Ar-Rahman I'm talking about, it's a very hyperbolic and powerful word in, in, in terms of grammar. You know, in, linguistically, it's a very powerful word. So when the people, when the people of Makkah, when they heard this, um, when they heard this word, they knew they knew Arabic to such an extent that Ar-Rahman cannot be used for human beings or in anyone like us. So Ar-Rahman is something which is divine. So you and I can be merciful in this world. You and I can be generous in this world. We can keep giving. We can keep being mercy, merciful. Um, but the thing is, one day our act of being mercy or merciful uh, or the act of giving and our generosity will come to an end because we're limited, we'll, we'll probably run out of money, or we'll probably be tired of being kind, you know, in the, in the long run. And when I mention this, a person dies, right? A person passes away, his generosity also stops automatically. And his, um, his kindness and in, in him being merciful and, and having mercy also ends right when a person when a person passes away. So right there, 
right there, you'll be able to fully, uh, you know, understand that everybody has limitation. So this is why you cannot attach this word Ar-Rahman in being merciful, you know, the ultimate uh, mercy. Ar-Rahman. <clears throat> you cannot have it. So this is why um, the people of Makkah, they were, they, were, they were doubtful and they were confused and they said, um, Ar-Rahman. So your Allah is like Ar-Rahman, the ultimate giver and, and he keeps giving and he's never tired. Wow. So with that being said, we can move on to the second word. This is the reason why we cannot attach Ar-Rahman unless you have the name Abd there. You're supposed to add Abdul Rahman, slave, the word Abd before your... Um, uh, your name, if, if your name has an attachment as Ar, Ar, of Ar-Rahman. Um, for Ar-Rahim, it's a, it's a general cause. It's, it's a general meaning, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be related to it, and the people can be related to it. Because Ar-Rahim has a meaning of limitation, that you can be merciful today, and you can be angry tomorrow. You can be giving today, and you can stop giving tomorrow. Now, the interesting part about these two words is that if you look at if you look at the root letters, um, they are ra, ha, and mean. Ra, ha, and mean. So ra, ha, and mean goes back to literally the word raham. And the word raham, again, we have to rewind ourselves back, right? We're rewinding ourselves back to the point in the womb of our mothers. Now, I know not everybody can remember that. So uh, it'll be very surprising that if someone says, hey, I remember my time in the womb of the mother. Remember, a person goes through the different realms and the different dimensions of the world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. We were all where? Through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we were in, 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 the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in, in the place where all the souls were, were, were kept. The alam al-arwah, the, the place of souls, the world of souls. We were there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his decision and his mercy and his blessings and his fadl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends us where? He sends us directly into this world, but not yet. We're in the womb of the mothers. We're in the womb of the mothers in that very world. And this is the world of the raham. Is this the world of the womb? We're in our mother's womb for approximately nine months, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you out early in this world. It can be, it can be, three, it can be premature. Three months, six months, it doesn't matter. You were there for some time. That's what matters. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us to this very world. So we're rewinding back to the womb of the mother. In the womb of the mother, the 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 raham, we were in total darkness, darkness upon darkness inside the womb of the mother. Last time I checked, um, there's no lamp there and there's no light bulb there where you can just switch on and there's no light switch you can turn on, you know, turn on and just be chilling over there, right? There's nothing like that. Um, the womb of the mother encompasses what? It is encompassed, is encompassed by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's enshrouded by the mercy of Allah. How so? It's because at that time, you know, when you are hungry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is feeding you. When, when you wanting to move around and kick in the mother's womb, to get a little stretch of yourself. See, you can't remember. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it happen inside that womb, subhanAllah. And the mother also realizes that when, when, when you have no movements, she has to take different types of food to make sure that you're, 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 you're awake and your heart is beating. But overall, who is doing this? Who is giving you that provision and those sustenance without any bill contracts, right? There's no bill sent to you. You don't have like, okay, uh, the bill coming to you, to the womb, to this womb and such and such, and, and you're receiving mails and, and bills. No, nothing like that. Your sustenance and provisions is, is, given, is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any cost. You're breathing in there without any cost. You're living there. Your heart is beating without any cost. So if that's not Rahman, you know, the, the, uh, the outcome of the Rahman and the effects of the Rahman and the quality of the Rahman being displayed to you, then I don't know what is. So your mercy in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is enshrouding you and it has shrouded you from not the time you came into this very world, but rather from the time that you were in the womb of your mothers, subhanAllah, you and I. Now, a person comes into this very world, 
right? He now the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not done yet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you your sustenance, your provisions, your 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 heart beating, uh, all your organs working. Um, and I know some people may ask, what if a person comes out with a defect? But that's that's towards the that's when you have Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. No matter what situation you come upon, what will it become for you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah when Adam alayhi salam was created, through the hadith we learned when Adam alayhi salam was created, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he put the soul inside him, you know what he did? He sneezed. And what did he say? He said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. That all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, generally when we sneeze, when I say Alhamdulillah, then another person will say, or the person next to me will say, Yarhamukallah, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one to say, Yarhamukallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon you. You see the word Raham there? If Allah Ta'ala would have, I mean, He could have said, watch out. Uh, watch out for the punishment of Allah. Don't sin. No. Allah Ta'ala knew that we will sin. Allah Ta'ala knew that. But it's just a matter of time how we return to Allah. And the biggest hint for that is when Adam Alayhi Salam, when he was created, um, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Yarhamukallah in reply to his Alhamdulillah. So a person comes into this very world. Now, you know, he's he's growing up. The mother is feeding him. The father is taking care of him. You know, he becomes loved by the people around him. He's just a cute baby. Then he turns into a toddler. And, and in no time, he turns into a teenager. And when he starts walking, and what's, what does he start doing? He's like, you know what? I'm, I'm something in this world, man. You don't know me. Right? I'm like, hey. Now, you know, I'm the one who's going to be working. I'm the one who's going to go to school. I'm, I'm bringing in money, right? And he starts talking a lot of things inside him. He tell to others. He does something. He wants to be appreciated. He wants, a, he, wa he, wants a, he wants a pat on the back, right? There's so many things that he wants. And you know what it is? It's, it's natural to have all of those feelings. It's natural. But what, what happens when time goes by, insan and, and the human being, they, they tend to forget the mercy of Allah. They tend to forget the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, sooner or later, a person should realize that where does this mercy come from? So when he starts to have mercy upon some people, maybe someone came to him for help. Maybe he shouted that person away. He did not have any mercy. Okay. One occasion. Now he has a chance to overpower someone, maybe a little kid. He's like, yeah, man, if you don't do this, I'm going to do that to you. No mercy, no compassion. I mean, he, he clearly forgets the very actions that he's doing every day. If it's sin, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not punishing him for it. Imagine being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every time we did something wrong. Man, that would have been tough. I would have been punished the most, believe it or not. So he's, he's, he doesn't stop to realize that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually all around him. He, he fails to uh, realize that. So the, with all this being said about realizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, we come upon the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was seen, be, uh, seen at, the, at the very state when he was kissing his grandson, Hassan radiallahu ta'ala, showing mercy and kindness to his grandson. And another person saw him and said, wow, you kiss your grandson? And you're showing kindness and, 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 and mercy to your grandson. So the Prophet ﷺ said, of course. And then, the, and then this individual said, I have so many kids around me, 10, 10 grandkids and children around me. I don't, I don't show this type of act of kindness to them. So the Prophet ﷺ tells him uh, that if the one who does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. So in, in other words, our mercy and our act of kindness in me being merciful to others, it actually has a direct link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I don't show mercy to someone, how do we expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show uh, mercy to us? And being merciful, it's, it's literally part of our deen. Because being merciful is what? It is our character. 
And character is something which people judge you for. And remember, you, you be mean outside, people are going to look at you, they're gonna look at your character, and what they're gonna say? They're gonna say, look, this is Islam. These are the Muslims. They, they literally have no compassion. They have no, they have no mercy. And, and if we don't show act of kindness and, and mercy, then people will judge our Allah by that. And you will be responsible for that. Believe it or not, you will be responsible. Because it's because of your action that not only we get blamed, but the whole entire Muslim community and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why it's very important that no matter what the given situation, we always have the qualities of being uh, merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, you know, just because it's the month of Ramadan, also remember that this is the month of mercy and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers you with blessings for he sends down mercy, decreases sins. Remember when I was, uh, when I mentioned earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy prevails everything? Yes, it decreases our sins and answers our prayers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your competition in good deeds. So, being merciful and being kind, it is what? It's, we should have competition in this. We should. We should definitely have competition in this. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us a tawfiq to act upon whatever has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me firstly and everybody here the ability to realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and that it prevails everything. And, and the second step is to realize that we need to be merciful to others and be kind to others. Jazakumullahu khayran for uh, tuning in on YouTube live on Masjid Tawfiq. Barakallahu lana wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, is it easier to attain the mercy of Allah in Ramadan? Of course, it is, it, it is easier because num number one, you don't have shaitan to mess around with you. They are locked away. And uh, since we have this pandemic, we've been in the lockdown before shaitan. So um, there's not much to do outside. We're at home. Um, and uh, of course, indeed, even though the person has the, the access to internet and everything and, and, the, and, and the opportunity of doing sin, but it's a little less than you know, going outside too because outside has more opportunities of doing sin. But we should definitely protect ourselves from both angles. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is, is, is you know, more attainable in the month of Ramadan, and we should catch this uh, this attainable and uh, opportunity. How many rewards do we get for reading Quran? How many rewards do we get for reading Quran? Um, you see, I mean, you're gonna have to sit down and do the uh, do the uh, calculation. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, you know, the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that um, you know about Alif Lam Mim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. I do not say by saying, you know, Alif Lam Mim, you get tenfold reward, right? But rather, Alif, you'll get a reward, and Lam, you will get a reward, and Mim, you also get a reward. So that's 30 rewards. So you want to calculate all the words and all the letters in the Quran? Be my guest. Let me know, okay? Send me an email, and you can, you can let me know how, how much the uh, reward is in, in terms of letters. Does the reward for Tarawi differ when performed at home? So in this case, of course, going to the masjid will, will get us our reward that we need, right? 25 to 27 times more reward than a person praying individually. But in this given situation, if you pray at home and if you have the right intention that if the masjid was open and I, I would have be able to, you know, uh, go to the masjid, if you have this intention, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us not only the same reward, but also more. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi